Even when I was a millionaire, I had the Ferrari, the Lambo, the Porsche, the M5, the Jeep. Women were throwing themselves by the dozen at me. And once everybody left my hotel room, I felt empty. And I was like, I don't know if I want this. I really just want to find when I was actually really happy. And when was the last time I was really happy? And that was when I was... It's Sophia Franklin. You are listening to Sophia with an S. And the S is for phenomenal. (laughs) Oh my God, this is my good side right here. Straight. Right here. Straight? Yeah, I like a straight. Oh, come on. I like a straight. You have to pick left or right. Oh, really? Yeah. Um, Do you want me to tell you? Or do you not want to know? Um, no, I, I, I don't, I don't mind. I, I, I always prefer straight, but probably this side. Okay. Mike, the motherfucking, nope. I'm not supposed to swear within three minutes for YouTube. Mike, the situation, everybody wearing Versace. I'm wearing Mew Mew. Not that anybody asked. Mike, thank you so much for being here. Thank you for having me. We've already had some pretty deep discussion we have and i'm actually pretty impressed yeah yeah i am with me i definitely am thank you uh, over the first five minutes of our conversation um you got your stuff together yeah <laughs> <laughs> right because because you were talking to me and guiding me no we were just really just having a conversation i think in, in our setup and I can tell that, like, you are very, you can go really deep. Mm-hmm. Um, you have, like, a, a very spiritual side and a little sensitive side to you. And I actually, like I said, I'm impressed. Would you say you have a sensitive side? 100%. I'm a cancer. Okay, so am I. Oh, really? Yes. When's your birthday? July 4th. July 20th. Oh, my God. That's so cool. Yeah. Uh, okay. That's that's probably where it's from. Yep. So your book, Reality Check, yes. is off the charts. It's doing incredibly well. Mm-hmm. I've heard so many amazing reviews. Mm-hmm. And there's so many things I want to jump into. Let's start a little bit from the beginning. You had just gone out of rehab and you were casted for yeah. Jersey Shore. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I didn't want to I didn't want to tell anybody about it. Yeah, but yeah. Okay, so can we talk about oh, it now? Oh yeah, no, I'm saying at the time oh, I didn't t- I didn't tell casting uh, producers about it because I had just gotten out of rehab, and we're talking about uh, going on to a TV show or an unknown one at the time, and you're living, working, and partying there for the summer. Again, at the time I didn't have much knowledge about self or uh, addiction, uh, for that matter. So when I did go to rehab, I got detoxed physically. And went right back to, you know, ripping and running technically, you know. And uh, once the show started that first season, I was really just going to the club and and partying and drinking at the time. I was staying away from my jug of choice, which technically was uh, oxycodone okay. um, and maybe cocaine. Okay. Yeah. Would you pop it would you smoke it what what the oxy oh at the in in the beginning it was really just um taking the pills okay i would always have a a a a very large amount at at all times on you one season two happened i started that season with probably like close to 500 pills (sighs) You know, that I crushed up in a pill crusher and I and I reconstituted with like fat burners. And I remember season two that I did that on purpose because, um, you know, these TV shows have uh, security protocols. And I'm like, how am I going to get by them? You know, what am I going to do? I'm like, there's no way they're going to know if I take a part of fat burner, uh, put 500 oxycodone, 30 milligrams in the said uh pill crusher bowl and then reconstitute them. And I remember in season two, as we're unpacking and I'm on the show and I remember like opening up my fat burner and popping the pills and looking at the eye in the sky, which was filming me, like there's no way they're going to know. There's no way they're going to know, but eventually they're going to know. This sounds like some breaking bad shit. It, like, it was, it was. So you were mixing it with fat burner, which does what? Well, no, I took the, I, I crushed I, up the pills. I crushed up the pills, put them in, in a ceramic uh, pill crusher. And, but, and then I took out what was inside of the fat burner, which obviously is like, could be caffeine or ephedra or whatever. I threw that out. And then now I'm dipping the, I guess the, uh, the pill, the capsule, the capsule 
back in and reconstituting it. Now, it started as an Oxy-30, um, but once you put it back together yourself, there's no way of telling what you just did. It could have been an Oxy-60. It wow. could be a 70. You don't know what you just did. And, and every single day was like... Oh, I wonder what this is. And then, you know, um, I, I just remember like the uh, the cameras in the sky watching me and I'm opening up the fat burner and there was – I didn't think there was no way for them to know at the time. For that, for that one. Yeah. Every single season after that was like – different capers, almost like Mission Impossible, trying to get past their security pro protocols that they were pretty much trying to protect me. Okay. And how serious were the protocols? They obviously didn't have dogs, but like, would they search your bags and your rooms or? They had a good eight to 10, probably security guards on set every season. They would go through everyone's bags. They would check your shoes. They would check your socks. Yeah. Um, you know, and and do a very thorough search, but they didn't have, uh, I guess they didn't have dogs on set. Obviously, I mean, who would think to grab some dogs? <laughs> no, <laughs> well, that was a very good idea of yours. Um, but they didn't have dogs. Uh, but again, do can dogs sniff out pills, oxycodone? Probably not. I don't think so. They can only sniff out cocaine and and weed. Probably. No, uh, I don't know. Well, okay, so I that's a pharmaceutical. True. I thought that they could sniff that. We we got to look that up now. Now I need I, to know. I, I, my bet is on no. No. My bet is on no because I, I I just don't think that it's almost like sniffing out an aspirin. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like you know, to a certain extent, I don't think they're trained to sniff oxycodone. Definitely weed and definitely cocaine. Um, yeah. Yeah. Weed for sure. They used to bring dogs to my high school uh -huh. to like go through the classrooms and like sniff all our bags and we'd have to do random drug testing. Yeah. I just don't think that they're going to be able to sniff out a, a pharmaceutical pill that has been formulated and crushed and and has like, you know. <laughs> Not after you're <laughs> done with it. <laughs> God knows what it is. But yeah. So yeah, every single season was uh, like Mission Impossible trying to get past MTV protocols. And that was after season two, they had given us pretty much like a million dollar raise. Um, and we were like the first kids to get paid that that type of big bu bucks at the time. Wow, you guys paved the way for a lot of reality stars now. If you're in the business of reality TV and you're not at the top, then then it's not even close. Yeah, to you're that. not you're not gonna get paid at all. Yeah. Very well. Um anybody that comes into the business, um, you know, you got to, you know, sort of make your name or or establish yourself first. Right. So the first season, it's only alcohol. It was only alcohol. Yeah. I was purposely trying to stay away from pills, which that was my drug of choice. Okay. And then second season, we're reintroducing the pills. Second season, we got that big million dollar raise. And the first thing I did was go to a Ferrari dealership and get a Ferrari. And I had about 500 oxycodone, 30 milligrams in my pocket at the same time. Okay. Now, again, I'm not condoning this behavior. No, no, no. I was just very, I was young. I was wild. I was reckless. And um, I, I guess I thought that's what you do. You know, I mean, and how who's going to prepare you yes. for that? Your parents don't know. Yes, yes. And the year before us getting that big million dollar raise, I didn't even have to file taxes because I was like a kid, like in college, like stripping and probably being a drug dealer. Right. So I didn't have to file taxes. You know what I'm saying? And then the next year you go to be making five million dollars and you're like, oh, wow, I, wow, that's a lot of money. I'm killing it. Um, I don't have to file, do I? <laughs> but you do, you do, because that was one of the reasons why eventually down the line, um, the IRS came knocking. Oh, it was from taxes way back. Yeah, when? They, yeah, exactly. So pretty much if you don't think you're going to get caught, most likely you're going to get caught pretty yeah. much. So I didn't file in, let's just say 2009 and the clock started ticking. And then eventually they came knocking at my door and they were waiting for me at the airport when I was going to Spain, like I was John Wayne with like eight, seven agents and windbreakers. This show is sponsored by AG1. So a few weeks ago, I posted a picture of my AG1 container that I keep in the fridge. And a lot of you guys had questions. I first gave AG1 a try because I know factually that I don't get the vitamins, minerals, and all the other things my body needs from my diet. 
and on a daily basis, forget about it. The other day, I had an entire frozen pizza for dinner and an expired protein shake for the day. That's all I had. But AG1 covers my bases with high quality ingredients like adaptogens, antioxidants, and whole food sourced nutrients. And it tastes amazing, by the way. Since drinking AG1 daily, I have felt more energy and I've even felt more consistency within my mood. Not only does AG1 deliver my daily dose of vitamins, minerals, pre and probiotics and more, but it is a powerful, healthy habit that's also powerfully simple. It's just one scoop mixed in water once a day, every day. I do this every single morning. It's become a part of my ritual. AG1 is the supplement I trust to provide the support my body needs daily. And that's why I'm excited to welcome them as a new partner. If you want to take ownership of your health, it starts with AG1. Try AG1 and get a free one year supply of vitamin D3K2 and five free AG1 travel packs with your first purchase exclusively at drinkag1.com slash Sophia. That's drinkag1.com slash Sophia. Check it out. Like I was like in front of just like the general public in front of at everybody the there was just like a good like five to seven agents in the IRS windbreakers with their clipboards saying hey you know you are being investigated for you know tax crimes a grand jury you know uh, investigation has been opened and at the time I was just so high and I was already going to Spain I was just disassociated at the time of what was really happening so do you think that part of the reason Obviously, there's the addiction portion, but do you think getting famous, being famous, being on a show, having all eyes on you contributed to you wanting to do drugs? No, I was just a very wild, you know, kid. Like, I was never a follower. You know, I was always, you know, a leader. Um, if you told me not to do something, I did it twice and took photos. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I was that type of kid. Even before I uh, was famous, I was a drug dealer. I was a stripper. You know, um, I loved women. I loved cars. I loved money. Then once I got the fame and the money, it was like gasoline to a fire. Okay. Let's talk about that. When you say gasoline to a fire, we all know what that means. Like things just got out of control. Yeah. But you also say in your book you felt extremely lost as a person. In in the, in the beginning, that's a, that's a very good question. In the be, in the beginning, I felt empty. Even when I was a millionaire, I had you know seven cars in my driveway. I had the Ferrari, the Lambo, the Porsche, the M5, the Jeep. Um, women were throwing themselves by the dozen at me, and I'm not just saying dozen. It was really at by the dozen. And once everybody left my hotel room. I felt empty and I was like, I don't know if I want this. You know what I'm saying? And obviously I eventually had an epiphany years later, obviously going through this, uh, this roller coaster. And I'm like, I really just want to find when I was actually really happy. And when was the last time I was really happy? And that was when I was in college and I was going out with my college sweetheart who is now my wife. Yes, which I absolutely want to talk about. How were you able to navigate or like what was your relationship like at the height of your fame and your addiction? At the height of my fame, you know, my uh, ex-girlfriend was with someone else. I mean, I, I heard whispers of her, um, you know, about to be engaged. And I'm like, damn, like, you know, she was the one that, you know, got away. Um, and in my book, I write that every time that I came home and I had a minute, okay, I would jump in my Lamborghini, right? 
and drive to Homedale, New Jersey, where my ex-girlfriend lived, hoping that she was outside or her parents were outside. And I was blasting Drake's Marvin room, Marvin's room, okay? Which if anybody knows about Drake's Marvin's, Marvin's room or whatever, Mar- Mar- Marvin's room, that it's kind of like, you know, leave your man or whatever. You know, I would eventually get her back, you know, but it's a really good story. It's an incredible story. And I think, I mean, I think her being in that other relationship is just a testament to your guys' relationship now. Because sometimes when I see people right out of high school, right out of college together, it worries me a little bit. Do you get what I'm saying? Like they haven't had experiences. Yes. Yes. Sometimes you have to let the bird out of the cage. And if it comes back, it's meant to be. And so how did you guys come back together for people who haven't read the book? Uh, in uh, 2013, um, around, a little bit before that, uh, the first series of Jersey Shore had just ended. I continued to do other shows like, you know, Celebrity Big Brother. Um, and I also did um, some other shows as well. Um, and a family member of mine um said, hey, you know, I just went to this kickboxing gym in New Jersey and guess who I saw? And I'm like, you know, and at the time I was in active addiction. I was on pills all the time. Mm -hmm. I didn't want to leave my house because um, people would take photos of me and obviously see that I was high all the time. And they told me that it was Lauren. And, And as soon as I found out it was Lauren, I was like, okay, I'm going to the same place tomorrow same time in hopes that she was there. And guess what? I did, and she was. <laughs> did you show up with the Lambo and Marvin's room blasting? I did show up <laughs> with the Lambo. Um, I don't know if Marvin's room was, uh, was playing, but I was um, in this kickboxing gym. I hadn't seen her in obviously years. The last time that I checked, I heard that she was getting engaged. I was in a really bad spot in my life, you know, depressed, you know, I was um, in active addiction, which means I'm, you know, dependent on pills. Um, I was like a recluse, you know, and we locked eyes and it was like time did not pass. Wow. And from and, and as soon as that happened, um, we had a conversation like um, afterwards and like the same spark was there. And I knew that this is what I need in my life. And then she was also telling me that at the time, the guy that she was with was not who she thought he was. So I was like, oh my God, like that's, that's perfect. Like, uh, you know, I might be able to, you know, um, I I guess it's court this, my, the love of my life back. Um, but also you got to note that I was in a really bad spot in my life. I, I didn't look good. I had put on a little bit of water weight from from just not being healthy. And I think she noticed it. And we kind of like nursed each other back once we decided to like get back together. And we pretty much got back together immediately once we locked eyes. And you told her right away what was happening. I'm well, and when she knew right away, she probably looked at my eyes and they were probably like, you know, soulless. Uh, <laughs> they were probably like pinpointed and, you know, which means like you're on opiates, you know, because the, you know, your pupils are, are pinpoint. And um, she probably knew right away and she didn't say anything. She probably knew, but she probably was like, I can fix this man probably. Mm-hmm. And she was the connection that I needed, like the belief in love that I needed to fight addiction. Wow. Wow. That's just such a testament. Yeah. She's really the star yes, here. Yes, she is. Like, shout yeah. out. Yes. So you've been sober eight years. Yeah, we're going on our ninth. Yes. We're in our ninth now. Yeah. Congratulations. Yeah. A lot of people don't make it oh, that far. Yes. It's it, the, the odds are against people um, when it comes to addiction. I mean, people don't make it. They never recover. They pass. They go to jail or prison. It's very, very sad. Yeah. I grew up around a lot of drug addiction, so I've seen it firsthand. Mm -hmm. And you said you were in recovery four times. Yeah. So what was, I mean, aside from your wife, what was like the fourth time or that defining moment or that moment that changed it for you where you were like, I can do this and stick to it? Um, It was a combination of... um, the last time, the last time that it happened, 
And um, a day before, I had uh, tried heroin for the first time. Mm. And my mom and my now wife saved me. And it's a really, like, unbelievable story. I mean, the story is just like— Anytime I tell it, like I get tingles because I feel that God saved me and spared my story so that I can save others. Wow. And um, I remember just um, being in a really, really bad place. Um, I was, um, it was 2015. I was, um, at the time, I was about three months behind on my rent. Okay. The millions I had spent already. I had spent, uh, you know, about a million dollars on lawyers defending my case. Jesus. Yes, a million dollars. Okay. Once my accountants looked at my books, they said, did you know you spent upwards of five hundred to $600,000 on cocaine and oxycodone? And I'm like, damn, really? But it's true. I was just very, very just, I was just really wild, you know? And, and you're I'm, not keeping track of that when a, you're a, a, in the exactly. depths of your addiction. Exactly. When you're spending about $2,000 a day, it adds up over a three-year period uh, or $2,500 a day. It adds up at the end of the day to about $600,000 after about three years. Um, so at this particular point, I'm really down on myself. I'm depressed. And uh, I'm about to be evicted. Um, my, uh, my family, my mom and, 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 and brothers and stuff, they, I mean, they, they knew that I was in active addiction. So they were kind of like losing hope. Uh, at the time, uh, my then girlfriend, who's now my wife, she was sort of like on her last straw as well. And, um, I just wanted to not feel the way that I was feeling at the time. So I called one of my buddies up. I'm like, yo man, can we score some pills? And he's like, yeah, sure. This is a kid that I grew up with. You know, we, 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 we drove to high school together. Um, we've been friends since we were little. He comes to my house and he's like, oh, we got to go to Newark. I'm like, damn, Newark? He's like, nah, man, you stay in the car, I'll drive. I'm like, all right, cool. We go to Newark and I knew it was a bad idea from the start. It just had a bad vibe to it. And we get there. I'm hearing sirens and cop cars and I'm just like, oh, this is horrible. I can't believe I'm doing this right now. It's almost that time of year, Sloots. And by that, I mean, it's almost time to pack our bags and indulge in all the world has to offer, which is beautiful Italian men. And thank God, because I've had it with the men here, straight up. My only problem, is that the language barrier could pose a little bit of, you know, some awkwardness, yada, 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 except wait, I've got Rosetta Stone, the most trusted language learning program available on desktop or as an app that truly immerses you in the language you want to learn. Sure, I know the basic words like Lemoncello, Vino, Ciao Bella. But when I meet my future husband in Ravello in the Amalfi Coast, I'm sure he's going to want to talk about more things than just my drink order, unfortunately. Rosetta Stone will get me exactly to where I need to be, which is in the Valentino store with my man. Bellissima. Rosetta Stone has been a trusted expert for over 30 years with millions of users offering 25 languages and speech recognition to help you with your pronunciation. So I don't know about you all, but I will be fluent by the time summer rolls around. And I hope you are too, because these episodes and my dating life are about to go international. I'm saying it right here, right now. Don't put off learning that language. There's no better time than right now to get started. For a very limited time, Sophia with an F listeners can get Rosetta Stone's lifetime membership for 50% off. Visit rosettastone.com slash Sophia. That's 50% off unlimited access to 25 language courses for the rest of your life. 
Redeem your 50% off at rosettastone.com slash Sophia today. All right, listen here, Slooty Locks. We are talking about our hair. And did you know that hair thinning will happen to approximately one in two women? That's right, sister. It's either me or it's you. Or if we're in a room of four, then it may be both of us and we can braid our four strands of hair together. You guys get the point. Hair thinning is normal, but we are going to do something about it because Nutrafol is the number one dermatologist recommended hair growth supplement with over 1 million people seeing thicker, stronger, and most importantly, at least to me, faster growing hair with less shedding. Not everyone's root cause of hair thinning is the same, so that's why I took the hair wellness quiz on Nutrafol.com for a personalized hair health plan to fix my root causes. If only therapy was this easy. Purchase online, no prescription required, free shipping and automated deliveries ensure you'll never miss a day and see results in three to six months. Take the first step to visibly thicker, healthier hair. For a limited time, Nutrafol is offering my listeners $10 off your first month subscription and free shipping when you go to Nutrafol.com and enter the promo code SOFIA. Find out why over 4,500 healthcare professionals and hairstylists recommend Nutrafol for healthier hair. Nutrafol.com spelled N-U-T-R-A-F-O-L.com promo code SOFIA. That's Nutrafol.com promo code SOFIA. He goes inside these apartment complexes and he's gone for like an hour or two. I mean, literally, it was like the longest stretch. Like I was literally like, you know, sweating in the car. He came back and he's like, oh, we're good. I'm like, okay, cool. We start driving on the turnpike back and he throws something on my lap. And I'm like, oh, you know, I thought it was a, a pack of 50 oxycodone, 30 milligrams, blues, they call in the street. And it turned out to be a bundle of heroin. And I'm like, I'd never seen it before. And mm-hmm. it was like uh, wax paper and it was rubber bands and it was like this tan substance. And I'm like, what the hell is this? And then I look at him like, dude, come on, are you for real? You're going to try to like push me over the line? Because anytime I ever heard anybody crossing that line of heroin, they don't come back. And at this particular point, if I didn't have a substance, I would start to go through withdrawals over the next couple hours. So my brain, I'm like, oh man, I no, you know, I don't want to do this. Anyway, I get back to my house. I go, Lauren's there and we're get, fighting because she knows that I'm doing bad stuff. I tell, I tell her upstairs, I want to go upstairs and be left alone. I locked the door and I got this substance on my hand. I'm like, all right, I'm just going to try it. So I take out a key bump. I'm like, a key bump can't hurt. You know, it's a small amount. It can't hurt. So I I, I go in and I try it. And I'm like, oh, my God, I, I really didn't like it. I'm like, I felt a little dirty at the time, but I'm like, I don't like it. So I'm like, all right. Um, I didn't really feel because I had a high tolerance when it came to uh, Roxy's. And then another voice on my shoulder, which obviously was the devil, was like, why don't you try a little bit more and make you feel a little better? So as I was going in for that that second key bump, on my phone rang and no joke, like I got tingles saying it right now, it was my mom. So imagine having your mom on one hand and then the devil on the other. I couldn't reconcile the two at the time. And literally I looked up at the ceiling like, oh my God, is there is there like some cameras in my cell? Because my mom was like, are you okay? I'm worried about you. I'm like, this is too crazy. And at the same time, Lauren's banging at the door trying to get in. And at that point, I'm like, this is too much. I got I to gotta surrender. I can't do this no more. I eventually uh, flushed the drugs or the heroin down the toilet. I had a tear coming down my eye because I knew how close maybe my life had just come. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I told my mom I had to go. I hugged Lauren and I went to rehab the next day. And so then when I was in rehab, I'm like, dude, this is this is my last shot. I got the government coming after me for 10 millions. I just tried heroin two days ago. I, I could have just put my life on the line. I got to put all hands on deck to try to save myself right now. That's such an incredible story. Yeah. It was divine intervention. It was. Also, 
Your mother has like a sixth sense at all times. I couldn't believe it. I, I couldn't. I, I looked up at the ceiling in the hi hats and I'm like, wait a second. I'm like, are there like, am I on the Truman Show right now? Like, <laughs> right. did somebody put like some cameras in my ceiling? I couldn't believe it. It was definitely a come to God moment. I feel that like God saved my life from the fiery pits of hell, mm -hmm. but on one condition. I go back in with buckets of water to save others. And that's why we have this book. Wow. That's that's really Sick. incredible. It's it crazy. is. It is. What advice do you have for people who are dealing with someone in their house, maybe like let's say their son, for example, or anyone, brother, husband, but someone, close family member who's dealing with addiction? It's a really hard spot it is. to want to take care of that person, yeah. but you don't want to enable them, but you're scared to just leave them because of what yeah. will happen. Yeah, you, I mean, you really got to try to inspire them. I mean, obviously the first step is getting the help, is sort of like putting your hand up and surrendering and saying, I need help, and then getting to rehab. That is the first step. But a lot of times people are reluctant to even do that. You know, uh, I have so many people that are in my DMs with the exact same question. I'm like, please, you know, gift your brother or your dad or your mother um, my book. Let them read my story. And if, if Mike, the situation can do it. And I was crazy, crazy as fuck. Can I say, can I say fuck? Absolutely. I was crazy as fuck. If I could do it, they can too. And that's really why I was so honest and raw in my book, because we all know Mike, he's nine years sober now. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm I'm an amazing husband and father and, and things like that. But like, if you know where I came from, you know what I mean? Where I was addicted, pretty much homeless, government coming after me for 10 million, uh, dependent on drugs, and I still got out, then your ass can get out too. That's... Yes. I mean, you're giving this book to someone so they can see it, right? Yes. And like understand it firsthand because yeah. I think a lot of people who are in addiction, they see no way out. Yeah. That's like a huge portion. And they also think that nobody understands them. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Like if you read my book in some of my crazy times, I'm actually jumping out of move, moving cars while Snooki, uh, Jay Wow is in the car, Polly's in the car because I'm going to try to cop drugs mm -hmm. while production and cops are there to protect me. And I still escaped and eventually still copped my drugs. Eventually, I found my way to the other side. But the stories are just so crazy. Yes. Well... I want to move on from this, but I think it's just so important. You on the show would say, and this was code for getting drugs. Oh, how, yeah. how many girls would yeah. be at the party? Yeah, I didn't think that production would catch on to that. Did they? They did. Okay. Because I was so excited to go tanning. Uh, they were like, there's no way that this kid can be this excited to go tanning or GTL every day. There's <sighs> got to be something to it. And there was because I I, I had – I was copying uh, 50 packs of blues or oxycodone 30 milligrams at the tanning salon every time I walked in there. Once they de would me and they stopped the cameras, there was a pack of 50 – uh, pills underneath the eyewear and the and the towel, which is ridiculous. Imagine someone setting that up. That is just totally ridiculous. It's insanity. It is. The amount of enabling that was like around you, you know, obviously it's you at the end of the day, but it's like a Martin Scorsese film. No, it is. Like this guy was getting 50 packs every time he went <sighs> tanning and eventually production found out that like, there's no way he can be this excited <laughs> to go tanning every day. Obviously I love tanning and GTL was our moniker, but I was, like I said, it was a, it was a bit, it much. was like an enabling the excitement it, was a yeah, little, and obviously they probably saw my eyes after and the behavior. I I started ruining like the set and throwing furniture out the window. And I'm like, I thought this is what y'all want. Remember Gladiator? Isn't this what you want? Yeah. Like, I'm like, <laughs> isn't this what you guys want? You know what I mean? Like, but I was just too crazy, you know? Um, and hence why eventually the relations with the cast um, and production was severed because I was just uncontrollable. I mm -hmm. was just, um, I mean, it was hard to be around me, I'm sure, because you just didn't know what I was going to do. Right. Which is kind of like... As a producer, it's you want the reality stars to be outrageous, but they really want you to like teeter this line, right? 
which is very, it's kind of a crazy line to be trying to teeter every day. Yeah, I mean, listen, I I, I definitely turned into a, a, a huge liability, but I eventually um, had an amazing recovery. But at the time, I mean, uh, you know, I would escape set all the time. And uh, it was just like a common occurrence where the cast or Wow or Snooki be like, oh, Mike bounced. I would bounce for an hour or two, maybe a day. I would cop drugs and then come back. And then when they wanted to frisk me, I'd be like, call my lawyer. Um, which, you know, uh, again, I was uh, very uncontrollable at the time. And the president of MTV was was had my phone on speed dial because we were the biggest show in the country when we first came out. I mean, we've been on TV for 15 years and anytime we're on air, it's like number one on cable. But still at the time in the beginning, we were getting like, like eight, nine million uh, viewers, which is like Game of Thrones numbers is records. We have the record for the most or the highest ratings in MTV history, so. I believe it. This show is and will always be so iconic. Um, how do you feel now? I mean, I know Jersey Shore, there's a reboot. Has it been difficult with your sobriety? No. 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 I uh, understand that I am uh, one of the craziest son of a bitches around. <laughs> you know, pretty much. Yeah. And uh, I, it's my job to keep that under wraps, you know. And so now I'm able to redirect that energy and, 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 and self towards positivity, towards work, towards being a good friend, towards being a good husband, being a good dad. The old Mike didn't know how to control it. And I was a, a menace. So that that's the difference. I can go into clubs now. I can go into bars. I can go to strip clubs. I'm the most outgoing, wild person in the club, okay? But I'm not on anything because I know myself. Mm -hmm. I already have that personality that inside of me. I'm on a vibe. You know what I mean? I'm, I'm high on life. I don't need anything. I, I, mean, I can feel it right now. Yeah. Like, see, that's where I'm like, I've tried to go out not under the influence of yeah. usually alcohol. And I'm like, I do not want to be at the club right now. Please take me home. I, eventually you start to, the people that are drinking start to look really dumb. Eventually. <laughs> eventually. And because you are providing sound conversation, okay? And eventually after a couple drinks, uh, your friends are, are, are doing the opposite. And eventually you're like, I can't, you know, after an hour or two, you're like, you're, you're looking dumb. You're sounding dumb. You're taking photos. You look great, but your friend looks like a mess. Right, <laughs> so right. So that's, so, but it, it, you know, it's pretty realistic to be like, okay, I'm going to drive you guys home. I'm going to become the designation. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Uh, and then the next morning when it's time to go to the gym, guess who doesn't have a hangover? Guess who looks good? Guess who always looks young now? It's you because you're making the good decisions. Yeah. It's crazy how... I quit alcohol for, I think it was 50 days. You're so much healthier. It's crazy how used to, like, we get used to feeling like shit and operating yep. from there that we think it's normal. Mm -hmm. And then when you're not operating from that place, you're like, whoa, I had no idea this was a possibility. You also gain a strength from almost like a streak. Like I'm on nine years of sobriety. Th that is on my sleeve like a badge of honor because I'm like a warrior. Not, not many people can do it. If you're like me and your CD organizer was filled with, now that's what I call dis and illegally downloaded music you got off of LimeWire, which left 97,000 viruses on the home computer, you are a millennial. And if you're a millennial, it's time to add Clarins Multi-Active Cream to your daily routine. I know the new kids have been obsessed with skincare since they were four years old, but we had a real childhood and some of us may be a little bit late to the game and that's okay. The good news is Europe's number one skincare line has a solution you can trust. Rooted in nature and innovated in science, Clarins has a long-standing reputation for creating industry-first, plant-forward products. Clarins Multi-Active Cream has been clinically proven to target the first visible signs of aging by smoothing lines and wrinkles, refining pores, evening tone, and texture. 
and strengthening the skin's moisture barrier, aka all really good things. I've been using Claren's Multi-Active Cream for about a month now, and I swear, not only does my skin feel amazing, but I can actually see a difference. It really looks like I'm getting, I don't know, the recommended amount of sleep that the normal human requires. Yay! And fortunately for you, you don't have to fly across the world to get it. Claren's Multi-Active Cream is available online now. Go to clarence.com slash Sophia and get multi-active day-night cream for 10% off, a free welcome gift, plus free shipping on your first order. That's C-L-A-R-I-N-S dot com slash Sophia with promo code Sophia. clarence.com slash Sophia with promo code Sophia. Okay, sleuths, let's talk about Ripple. A British startup I absolutely adore, launched by a brother and sister duo, determined to get the world off nicotine, which is something I've struggled with, as you all know. Ripple is a 0% nicotine aromatic diffuser to puff on with plant-based ingredients, organic base, and natural aromas. It was so easy to integrate Ripple into my daily routine because it felt like home. I can still anxiously clutch on to it just how I previously would with those nicotine having devices. And each flavor has a specific benefit. My favorite formula is Boost, which has maca and green tea with a pomegranate aroma that quite literally gives you a boost throughout the day. And it also tastes amazing. So I'm basically doing aromatherapy and saving my future self. So why not make it easier on yourself and let Ripple help? Use my discount code SOFIAF for 15% off at therippleco.com. So my strength uh, my courage and all that, it, 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 it's almost like it keeps going up because I know how hard that is. When, and, and obviously, I'm, I'm very healthy as well. So I think you also gain a strength from um, abstinence. Yes. Mm -hmm. I recently recorded an episode last week where I break down crying multiple times. I think I was talking about yeah. this when you walked in. And a big part of it was this feeling where – I am 31 and I kind of was looking in the mirror like, who are you? Mm. Like not a huge, strong sense of self. Mm -hmm. And I don't know where it got lost along the way. If I just never developed it, I, I don't really know. How long did it last? Well, I feel like I'm in it a little bit. Oh, really? So it's, that's it's, why it's, it's, it's been a, a day, a week, a, a month. I mean, mm, I feel like, well, it's really come to my attention in the past couple months. Oh, couple months. But I mean, it's always been there a little bit, feeling a little bit lost, okay. you know? Um, and people would be like, okay, what's your, what's your five-year plan or where do you see yourself? And I never knew how to answer that, mm -hmm. which maybe that's different, but I think there's some similarities. But my question for you is, how did you find yourself? Um, I got on the path of self-improvement, whether it was mentally, physically, spiritually, personally, and professionally, in any negativity, like on a list, I would remove it, okay? And I stayed on that because I remained sober. Um, and you can gain inches um, physically, you know, whether it's at the gym. Um, also, you can gain it, you can, uh, gain it uh, through uh, work, which is, which is this. Mm -hmm. um, if you're always on that particular journey, um, it's a very rewarding journey because there's always something to improve. There's always somewhere where you can get inches. I can, I can be a good friend. I can be a better friend. I can be a better son. I can be a, an amazing dad. I can be a better worker for MTV or some of the people that I work with. I can have an amazing interview with you and be like, wow, I rock that for the day. Mm -hmm. And and that is how I continue to get on my journey that I've been on for almost nine years. And it has been like my secret sauce. Yeah. 
Yeah. And it's like a one day at a time thing. And 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 before we started this podcast, I said, at the end of the day, let go and let God handle the rest. Be your best for that day, right? Mm-hmm. At the end of the day, put your head on the pillow, right? When you wake up the next day, if you repeat, there's not many people that gonna, are going to be able to keep up with you when you work like that. Yes. Yes. And it is really one day at a time. Yes, 24 hours at a time. I don't like— Oh, I like that. Yeah, it's 24 hours at a time. I can be my best self. I don't compete with anybody but myself. And if I can be better than the day before, there's no one that can compete with me because I am working at a pretty high, efficient pace. That's huge. You should only be comparing yourself to yourself yes, or else you get lost. Yes. They say that comparison is the thief of joy. It is. So you need to uh, compare yourself to you. yes- yesterday. Yes. Yesterday. Yes. Yesterday's you. Yeah. Okay. Let's uh, have a little bit of fun. I have a couple of questions for you. We're going to just like fire them out. Mm-hmm. Taylor ham or pork roll? Definitely pork roll. Okay. A hundred percent period. The brand is Taylor Ham. Wait, is it? The brand like the brand is Taylor Ham, but it's pork roll, the name of the product. Okay. That's how that's my stance. Okay. Yeah. Do you still GTL? Not the not the one GTL. Not, not with we the just pills in it. About. Not with the pills in it. Yes. <laughs> the sober yes, GTL. Yes. GTL is a way of life. It is self care. It's like gym, tan, laundry, manicure, pedicure, haircut, tanning face, though. Facial. Tanning. I got you. Tanning. Um, I do not tan the face. Okay. Okay. I put two towels over the face. Um, sunscreen. I I think sunscreen's poison. Okay. That's actually, that's valid. You, you, do, you, do you feel what I'm getting from? Mm-hmm. I think sunscreen poison. I think the sun's good for you. Okay. The sun, but the tanning bed, that's like a little controversial. It might be different. It might be different. Yeah. I, I have to look into that. Okay. I have to look into Okay. That. You'll look into yeah. it. I, well, do you tan? Um, ooh, I'm going to get eaten up alive. I tan the body. I tan the body <gasps> once or twice a year. Okay. In the middle of winter, especially when okay. I go home. Okay. Where it's Utah and it's very cold and dark and gloomy. Uh huh. People would get really mad at me for that. I'll like, be honest. I, really I, mad I, at now, me. Now the question is: Do you get vitamin D from uh, a tanning bed? I feel like you do. You do. Because my doctor prescribed it to my mom. Okay, so I'm gonna I'm gonna give the thumbs up for the okay. for the, for the I'm gonna give the thumbs we're up. We're not for sure that. we can do that yet. We're gonna we're gonna circle back. You are extremely in shape. You got here with your oatmeal. I had a cake pop. Yeah. And you yeah, had, you, you were like, I am not going to eat this cake pop in front of you while you eat the oatmeal. <laughs> yeah. One of one of my new goals for 2024 is to reveal an amazing six pack this year. Now that I just dropped my book, now I need to divert uh, my new energies to a new goal. Okay. Where is the, are we at like a three pack, four pack? Um, yeah, we're at definitely at a four pack for okay. sure. And I think in a, in a couple weeks or months of, um, consistency, any, anything's impossible for any, anybody to be honest with you. So. Yeah. How important is protein? I'm asking for myself by the way, cause yes. I'm trying to gain. Um, here. it is important to consume protein. I think, uh, 20 to 30 minutes, uh, post-workout. How many grams of protein do you got? Um, I, I believe that you're supposed to have one per pound. Jeez. I, for, I, for, 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 for a male, I believe. But how do you really do that realistically? I mean, shakes are usually 30 grams, 40 grams per shake sometimes. How, you how know? many shakes are you having a day? You could have uh, two shakes. And then obviously in the other meals, you can have, um, you know, chicken or tuna or salmon. I'm, I'm actually trying fasting these days as well. Mm. I heard fasting is amazing for you. Intermittent fasting. Intermittent fasting, but I'm I'm sh- I've tried 24 hours before, but I really want to shoot for the uh like the three days. Oh, okay. I've heard of the. I think I've seen the three days. I think it's really good for you. Um, the funny part is I did a 24 hour fast, and at 24 hour one, 
um, I had pizza and chicken fingers to celebrate at 2401, <laughs> <laughs> which is kind of funny. But, so you were like literally ordering it beforehand to be and, on and, and I, I did myself dirty because I, I felt a little sick afterwards because when your body goes through the, the fast and then you go feed it chicken fingers and pizza, it's probably the worst thing ever. But my brain was telling me to do it. It was a bad idea. I felt sick for like two hours. Okay, you did get sick. I felt sick. Almost like the, the, the it, maybe I shouldn't have ingested that. Maybe I would have should have tried juice first. Or, or maybe so, or something it. a little healthier, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Do you really think the Earth is flat? Ooh, um, that is a very good question. Just be real. I believe that it says it in the Bible. Okay. And that there is a firmament over us, and you can't break that firmament. Okay. Um, I believe it is somewhat flat. Yes, I okay. don't think. I don't think. I don't think it's. Uh, I think. Uh, uh, the jury's still out on that. Okay. Yeah. It's your yeah. opinion. Yeah. Well, if we're going to talk about conspiracy theories, some people might call it that. Yes. I am still not convinced that it is... Um, Round. Yeah. I, there are tons of flat earthers ac across the globe. Okay. Do you think Stevie Wonder's blind? Oh. Um, he's not. Oh my God! You don't think he's blind? No, I just Stop talked it. about this. I just talked. Are you about into this. conspiracy too? Mm, not so much. Okay, because my TV... whole my whole TikTok is conspiracies. Okay, April eighth, it's going down <laughs> on the solar eclipse. Anybody get ready? Stock up on water, food could be going down. April eighth. April. It's all over my TikTok. Damn. The, the solar eclipse, once once in a lifetime uh, event. I think in certain states they're they're calling like national guards and things like that. The whole Jersey Shore crew is stocking up on food. Okay. Yeah. It's well. Happening. My family is from Utah. My grandma and grandpa yeah. are Mormon. Like, they've yeah. been stocked. <laughs> they've been Yo, stocked I, for I, a my, while my, thinking. My Amazon list right now is uh, bad. I have it right now. It's so funny. <laughs> my Amazon list for April 8th is, um, you'll laugh. Um, I'll give it to you. It is, okay. I have candles, li Ooh. lighters, battery-operated radio, solar-operated battery charger. Smart. Um, matches, extra water, and um, battery operated uh, radios, like the two way the two way radios. I think you need like dried oats. You need you need like some oh. food in there that can like. I, I, oh well, here's another thing. You're I, like, oh, I thought I would just wait, fast that wait. whole time. I got eight chickens in my backyard, and I get eight eggs a day. I ain't playing. We ain't playing at the Situation Compound. Fuck. I got. I get eight eggs a day. And if you check my story, I just gave like a dozen eggs to JWoww. Um, they just taste so much better. It's like natural, organic. I feed my eggs like the best stuff. I mean, they're getting Italian seasoning. Um, we're giving them crushed red pepper. The chickens are getting that. Yeah, the chicks, yeah. Wow. Yeah. We ain't playing. Damn. Yeah. That's better than I'm eating. When I, when I wake up, the mark of a great day for me is how many eggs I'm getting from my backyard. <laughs> I'm serious. It's so it's it's amazing. I want to have chickens, but it's a little bit hard here in New York to have chickens. Oh, they're pretty. Um, Unless you have a roof, they're pretty easy to take care of. Like if 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 you've never had them before, it's like 15 minutes a day for for t to take care of them, and that's if you're on top of everything. My chickens look amazing. They're big. They're beautiful. Um, my eggs are nice and clean. My coop is clean. Obviously, you can tell I use that same obsessive personality. Yeah, I'm like, wait. <laughs> As you can, your chicken's you, coop yeah, is clean yeah, all and, the time? Because okay. it's part of dad's duty to go in the backyard and make sure things are in order. Uh, so, yeah, it's, it's, it's a cool little fun fact. I got eight chickens in the backyard, and we get about eight eggs uh, every single day. You like scrambled or over easy? Over easy. I got you. I... Do you ever have your kids like take care of the, the I have, poop I and ha the chickens? I have the um the two year old come out and and it's amazing. We jump in the golf cart, we go in the backyard, That's and so we get cute. the eggs and we give them to mom. It's adorable. That's really cute. Okay, well, Mike, this has been such a great episode. I feel like we covered so many. We did. Things. It was cool. Yeah, and you're just a great testament to what kind of life you can live no matter what your circumstances are right now. Yeah, pretty much. I mean, listen, the comeback is greater than the setback. You got to just really never give up and believe in yourself and push forward one day at a time. Damn. Okay. And your book, Reality Check? Yes, it is killing it right now. We are, have been in the past couple of weeks, I think the uh, top 20 books in the world. We have thousands of reviews on Amazon. 
Um, and uh, the most common denominator and review of the book is that they cannot put it down. Mm -hmm. So I definitely highly recommend that you guys just give it a shot. It's definitely going to be a movie shortly. And you were telling me earlier, you did not leave anything out. No, like, I didn't. You put every single crazy ass thing that's happened to you. I mean, if you read that book, you'll be like, oh my God. <laughs> like, you're, <laughs> you're like, oh my, like, oh my God. Like you, it, it's a real page turner, you know, yeah. and, and it has a lot to it. I mean, it's, it's not, it's not just a book about addiction. It's, it's a book about uh, overcoming obstacles. I mean, yeah. you know, and uh, I really think that uh, it's, uh, everyone's gonna, gonna love it. Just give it a shot. Yep. And then your podcast with your wife, Here's the Sitch. Yes, yes. We were doing that for a couple of years. And so. now not we, so we, much. We, we, we took, a, took a break because, um, you know, we've been having so many babies. <laughs> <laughs> That's yeah. a great reason. Yes. Yeah. I Listen, I have in my house, I got three babies now. And like, eight chickens. Oh, no, eight eggs. Oh, no, no. Three babies and eight, chick eight, eight chickens, yeah. Oh, shit. Yeah. Okay, so there's the, a lot going on over there. Yeah, I mean, when you put one baby down and you're like, you see another one, you're like, oh, wow, I, there's another baby. And then you turn around, there's another one. You're like, oh, my God. Anyway, at the end of the day, I'm, I'm living um, my dream, man. I mean, and then the dream for me was to have this big Italian family um, and – and I'm living it. You know, I'm doing it. You got it. Yeah. You got what you wanted. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for coming on. And for everyone listening, go check out his book. And please subscribe to my channel. And I'll talk to you guys next week. Bye. Okay. Yes. So cool. Woo! <laughs>